Hello engineers, welcome to a new video on low level design. In this video, we are going to look at a simple ride booking system using the low level design concepts. I hope you are ready. Let's get started. So this is the scope we are going to work with today. Design a ride booking system similar to Uber or Lyft that connects riders with nearby drivers. The system should handle ride requests, driver matching, fare calculation and ride status tracking. Key requirements are like this. Riders can request rides by specifying pickup and drop off locations. System should find and match available drivers within a certain radius of the pickup location. Drivers can accept or reject rides within a time window. Track real time location of drivers and ongoing rides. Calculate fare based on distance time, vehicle type and surge pricing if applicable. Allow riders to see estimated time of arrival and fare before booking. Handle ride status updates like requested, accepted, started, completed or cancelled. Right. So this is the scope we are going to work with. Like I suggested in the previous videos as well, always try to imagine the scenario from the user's perspective, put yourself in the shoes of the user and try to walk the journey and then we'll see what all things we need to make the design, right? So let's imagine the ride booking uh, journey. So first I'm opening the app, I'm entering my pickup location, which is usually my current location and then I'm entering a destination where I want to go and then I'm able to see the prices for different uh, types. For example, an economy car or a premium car can have different types of pricing. So the prices are available for me before booking. And then I choose a mode of uh, ride like economy or premium. And then it goes through a system of uh, finding drivers. So there can be a bunch of drivers that I can see on the map that are available nearby and one of them will accept my ride and the driver will come to my location, driver will start the ride, I go along the ride, driver will end the ride, I make the payment and then the ride is completed, right? So in this scope, we are not worried about the payments, but we are worried about the rest of the journey, right? So what do we need? First, on one side, we have the rides which are coming from the apps and then on the other side, we have the drivers who are in some available state or idle state or offline state. So we need to somehow connect the riders to the drivers. So you can imagine if the riders directly talk to the drivers, it can be a little cumbersome to manage. So let's add an intermediary in between who can take in the rides, do some processing, connect with the drivers, fetch one of the drivers, assign the driver to the rider. And then this mediator can also do the pre-calculations of the rides based on the pickup and drop off locations and things like that. So a mediator is kind of helpful here right so we have rides we have the mediator and then we have the drivers so what else we need the ride can go through multiple states like requested driver assigned uh, ride started right completed and so on right driver can also have their own states like they can be available they can go offline they can be in a ride these are some of the states for the drivers right so we can see different states we can see a mediator and uh, there is also the concept of uh, different pricing strategies, right? So there can be normal pricing, there can be surge pricing, there can be PCAR pricing and so on. So we are envisioning a pricing strategy to be available in the system so that we can switch between strategies and then calculate our fare depending on the current strategy, right? So these are some of the things. And then we also have to distinguish between the different right types, economy, premium and so on. So we need a type separator for the rides and uh, I think that's it. So, so these are the things we need. So let's look at the class diagram now. So on one side we have the ride and then in between we have the rides manager and on the right side we have the drivers. So let's see how they're working together. So for the ride we have all these details, pickup location, destination location, we have the right type and what is the right type? Right type can be economy, premium and so on because this can grow on its own it is making sense to keep it as a separate class and have individual objects implement this interface, right? And then write will have its own state, write can be in a requested state, which is the default state. Then we can have driver assigned state, write started state and write completed state, right? And the respective functions to modify the state transitions, right? So this is a state pattern. And uh, there is also this one pricing strategy, which will be into the rights manager, so this, this can be normal pricing, search pricing and so on. And what I've done is I've kept the right types within the pricing strategy, right? So that if I want to see prices of all the right types at a time, I can just make one call and get the pricing for all right types, right? For example, if I'm just entering my pickup and drop location, I want to able to, 
I want to be able to see all the prices for all the right types. So it was making sense to keep it like this. If you don't want it, you can remove it. And then we have the rights manager. Rights manager will have the pricing strategy, all the rights, all the drivers within itself, because this is a mediator collecting data from one side and managing all the objects internally. So the rights manager will expose these methods. First method is to create a right using pickup destination and right type. And then we can call request right to actually start looking for the drivers. So at this point, we can go through the list of drivers and see who is within radius and who are in available state and so on. Right. So one driver will be assigned, which will then change the state of this right to assign driver. So the state will be updated to driver assigned and so on. And there can be other functions like start ride end ride, so which were, which are just modifying the states of the right. Right. So and then there is get prices, which will calculate the prices from the pricing strategy. Right. So this is the rights manager who's, who is acting as a mediator. And then we have the driver class who is having name, mobile number, current state, current location, and the driver is attached to a particular vehicle. So we are having the setter methods for this, including set state. And then the driver can be notified for any available rides driver can choose to accept a ride or reject a ride and then there are methods for changing the state of the driver so the right manager can call the driver's functions like this to change the state and then these are the states of the driver available offline and in ride right so this is the class diagram of the and simple ride booking system from left to right right so this is not the only solution. Obviously, you can have a different approach, but the idea is to practice low level design and uh, implement design patterns mainly. So what are the design patterns here? So you can see here there is a strategy pattern being used here. And here we have the state pattern being used for right state and driver state. And we have the rights manager who is acting as a mediator. So that is the mediator pattern. And then for every ride, the drivers are being notified for an available ride. So drivers are acting as observers for this rights manager. So it is kind of an observer pattern. So there are a bunch of patterns being used here. And because we have studied all this, we are able to think through them and apply them to a particular problem. Right. So this is the class diagram. Now let's look at the code implementation. So I'm in VS Code now. This is a new repo for LLD ride booking. So the link will be available in the description along with the link for the class diagram as well. So definitely check it out. So first, let me run this and show you how it works. So you can see here there is a driver named Vinay Kumar who is now available, which means the driver went online and then driver Vinay Kumar is assigned to ride one. So there was a ride created and the ride was requested to available drivers and one of the drivers was chosen, which is Vinay Kumar. And then the ride one is started, ride one is completed and the fare is calculated based on a particular pricing strategy and the distance between the uh, source location and the destination location. Right. And then the driver Vinay Kumar went offline. So this is a typical ride booking life cycle. So let's see how this is going. So we are creating a new pricing strategy for normal pricing and then we are passing the pricing strategy to the rights manager who is our mediator. And we are creating some drivers along with a car. So Vinay Kumar is having a car with number ABC123 and the driver is added to the manager, right? Similarly, there is another driver Rahul Sharma who is also added to the manager. And then driver one goes online. Now we are creating a right types. So there can be economy and premium. And this is the base price per kilometer. For example, 15 rupees per kilometer in economy, 20 rupees per kilometer in premium, right? And then now we can create a ride using a pickup and a destination. So manager.create ride is called with pickup destination and the mode of the ride, which is economy, the type of the ride, right? And then we are requesting ride. This is where the assignment of driver happens. And then we have start ride, we have complete ride. This is where the internal state transitions are happening between the ride and the driver. And then driver is going offline, right? Now let's look at the key pieces. First, let's see the rights manager who is holding a vector of rights, a vector of drivers and the pricing strategy. So when a ride is created, a new ride object is created and it is pushed to the rights vector. 
and when we do request ride so we go through the list of drivers and choose one of them right so we are checking for the first available drivers and assigning the ride to that driver right so when we call ride dot assign driver we are changing the state of the ride and internally we are changing the state of the driver as well to occupied right and then when we say start ride again it is a similar process the rides start ride method is called which is changing the state of the ride and internally it is also changing the state of the driver and then we have complete ride which is also changing the state of the ride and also doing a calculation based on the pricing strategy right so for this we are passing in a distance we can also calculate this distance between different lat longs using haversign formula or any calculator like that and then we are also passing in the right type so based on the right type based on the distance we are able to calculate the fare and then we are printing out the fare right so that is the right manager now let's quickly look at the other pieces so this is the right class which is holding all this information pickup location destination location the right state the right type and so on so for assigned driver we are changing the state to accepted for start ride we are changing the state to started and for end ride we are changing the state to completed and we are calling the respective ch state change methods in the driver object as well right now let's look at the pricing strategy so we are having only one virtual method called calculate so here we are taking in the distance taking in the right type and we are just doing a multiplication and for search pricing we are multiplying and doing a double right because of the search it can be 2 1.5 1.15 anything like that right after that we have the driver class again we have multiple state transitions which are just changing the state of the driver so these are some of the key pieces of the code the code is available in github definitely check it out do try to make your own changes to it and uh, see how you can practice low level design right so that's all for this video guys i hope this video was helpful to you if you have any questions definitely ask me please leave a like if you found this helpful please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one cheers